Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming to the first ever Growing Up Latina dinner. I'm super excited, and thank you guys for coming out. When I first started Growing Up Latina, I really wanted to share our stories. It was important for me to hold a space for Latinas to be seen, to be heard, and to live out loud. This has always been the mission of Growing Up Latina, as well as encouraging us all to network across and the idea of lateral networking. I'm very proud to be a Latina, and there's nothing else that I would rather be. In season one, we had an opportunity to hear the stories of some of the most valiente y fuerte mujeres. We discussed mental health, we discussed stigmas in our community, finances, and the power of credit, um, education, success, failures, familia, and more. I want to thank you, ladies. Oh, I didn't want to cry. You got this. I want to thank you, ladies, for sharing your story with me. And I want to thank you for trusting me to share your stories with the world. My makeup artist is going to kill me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm so gracious that you guys saw the vision of growing up Latina and for building this community. Together, we are stronger. I want to thank Jack Daniels for holding a space for us to talk our ish. <laughs> I want to thank Zona de Cuba for their hospitality. And I want to thank our amazing sponsors, who, by the way, are all Latina-owned brands. Yes. So give it up to them. Yeah. Loisa, Sigma Beauty, Crisos Curls, Gasita Michi, For Tomorrow, and Bute Brand. We occupy powerful spaces and let us never forget our work and the places that we hold on this table today. Cheers to you and thank you to everyone who is watching tonight. Cheers. 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 <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so that's good. On everyone's plate, there's a question. You guys will read your questions, and let's start the conversation. Cindy. Yes. All right. So tell me you're Latina without telling me you're Latina. Mm. Arepas. Ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lo que pasó fue. <laughs> confidence. I think that most Latinas are pretty confident. I'm very confident. And I think everyone on this table is confident. I agree. Arepa. Picante. Yes. Mofongo. Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think we're very unapologetic. <laughs> we kind of um, step into our own easily. I think that comes from our mothers fortifying us that strength. Um, yeah, I can see that. So I say my, my hands. When I start yes. speaking, you start speaking with the hands, right? Latina. I'm, I'm speaking like and I'm, yeah, my mannerisms, my hand movements, my head movements, oh. like everything I start speaking and they're like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Puerto Rican. <laughs> I got a good one for you guys. Bilingual. When you get mad and you start speaking in Spanish out of right. nowhere, it's 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 the Spanglish. The Spanglish. Mm -hmm. That's all the way Latina. I would say being loud. And oh, we talk really loud. We yell loud. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ooh, loud. Our energy is loud. Yes. So, so you're just being loud. I can just yeah. listen to merengue, salsa, and I'm like, there's nothing like the rhythm and you know music of our culture and mujeres guerreras how we are like it says valiente y fuerte you know like no matter all the stages of things that we can go through we we're gonna stick it out and still do what we have to do how important is representation and having a seat at the table in your respective field 
I'll take that one. Uh, so for me, I do personal finance education content. And, you know, the financial services industry has always been dominated by white men with property. It's not meant for people that look like us, quite frankly. And so for me to be able to create a space for women to unapologetically build wealth boldly without, you know, having to be humilde or, you know, hesitant, for me, it's, it's empowering because money is the one thing that affects every single person on this planet, no matter your religion, your sex, your creed, your race, uh, your gender. And so for Latinas to be unapologetically building wealth and for me to be a voice in that space is super empowering. Yeah. I will also answer in that same question, um, especially in the entertainment, music entertainment being a... Latina stylist, especially an Afro Latina, mm -hmm. you know, um, just having our voice being represented by different brands that you know we, we do deserve a seat at that table of being in in the next Lancome billboard or things like that, you know, in fashion and beauty. So I feel like it is something that I would love to see more. And I was actually just speaking to the girls about it on. Netflix, I'm like, hey, they need a uh, Emily in Paris for Latinas or adding a, a, a Latina yep. to that segment of, you mm -hmm. know, having a girl talk about fashion, but bringing that Latina flavor to to that whole cast. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do deserve that seed and our voice heard and our language and culture also to all of these amazing opportunities that I still don't see that are open yet. OK, so why do you think there is a mental health stigma and how can we break it? Honestly, I think it's a lack of empathy and the lack of education about that subject. Mm -hmm. um, how can I say that? I think that if we become more aware more understanding of people who are dealing with mental illnesses, those people who have the courage to seek for help. I think it's just that we are not supporting them. We're just seeing them as, oh, they are dealing with depression, but are you really helping them in any way? Or, you know, growing up, I think that we had this in our conversation, growing up, uh, especially in my household, I wasn't um, allowed to say certain things because it wasn't right. But why isn't that right? right? You know, like, I'm not feeling well. Why am I feeling this way? So, yeah, it's just that. It's a lack of, of, of empathy, really, and the lack of knowledge about it. Yeah. When you see someone that is obvious, that it's not mentally stable, mm -hmm. are you there judging? Or are you there trying to help? So it's interesting because I just shared on one of my episodes um, something about myself. So my mother has Alzheimer's and I battled with it during the interview. I interviewed Melly and it was something that I was so hesitant to share. And then during the time when we were going to release it, I kept battling like, well, should I release it? What do I say? Um, how do I explain this to my family? And I remember going to my family, like, you know, I, I said something about mommy. And my brother said, you know what, you, you can't, you, you, you gotta clip that episode, like you cannot release that. And I said, why? And it was such a huge thing for my family. And I said, but this is exactly why I'm saying it. Like, we can't discuss, like, why is it such a big thing if I say my mom has Alzheimer's? Why is that so frowned upon? Why can't I say it? Why do I have to keep everything hidden? So it's a huge thing, at least in my family. It's definitely something I'm trying to break. Yeah. Um, yeah. I go with, like, the each one teach one type of mentality. Yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah. it's important that we get comfortable having the uncomfortable conversations. Right. Because I feel like minorities in general just have a hard time addressing the elephant that's in the room that everybody knows but don't want to speak about. But they don't understand that bringing awareness to what's going on will actually be more beneficial and helpful. And staying quiet about it, I feel like it, it does a little more harm because you're not 
if you love somebody, you'll hold them accountable. And it don't have to be like in a malicious way or mean. You're just like, hey, I care about you. And, you know, I noticed these things about you. I'm here to support you. Just let me know how the family is here to support you. So let's talk about it, see how we could get help. And um, I would say to, to piggyback off what you said, the lack of accountability. I think that the generations before us, carried on trauma and never took accountability to say it stops with me. Right. And I think like for me, my mom stopped that, the trauma that maybe my grandmother passed to her mm -hmm. where she didn't do the inner work or she didn't have the accountability or the awareness. And then my mom was like, no, that's not happening with me. I'm, I'm, I want my daughter to speak to me. I want her to express herself. I want her to come to me. Mm -hmm. I want to listen. I want to understand. And then because she did that with me, I'm I'm only going to continue that because that's what, but there was truly a lack of accountability to say, hey, I need to work on myself. Mm -hmm. There's 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 a lot of blaming, I feel like, yeah. mm -hmm. in the Latina culture where we, we blame other people because it's so much harder to look at ourselves and say, no, let me check myself real quick. Like, mm -hmm. it's me, you know? So I would say a lack of accountability too. Mm -hmm. I think on the flip side, um, there's also, there was a need for survival yeah. and there was a lack of information yeah. and resources. I had this conversation with my brother um, the other day, my dad's retiring finally, you know, he's going back home. And my, my brother was like, no, cause he has to you know, have respect for my feelings. And I was like, I feel you and I sit with you in that, but like, give my dad some grace. You know, like he came to this country and he didn't have time to figure out like all these mental health, like he had to work mm -hmm. and survive and provide for the family. Right. And I said, luckily, you were able to get therapy. Mm -hmm. So although he didn't take care of him, he provided you with the resources that you needed. So give him grace. Mm -hmm. And I think he had to sit with that and understand it because I, I, a lot of times we kind of don't remember like back then did they really have like social media where people yeah. were posting woke posts or resources right uh -huh. yeah. did they have time to go to the doctor and be like you know what yo estoy deprimida or money yeah. or money yeah. and then también venimos de una cultura where women are the, the strength you that you're sick what no i gotta cook for these kids i gotta clean i gotta work i gotta iron yeah i don't have time to to say i'm sad or i have postpartum or my husband is doing me dirty and i still gotta be strong for my daughter you know what i mean like people don't i don't think we give that generation that got us here to this table today enough grace mm -hmm. and um i think we have to be more appreciative of where we are because of their sacrifices and i think that's very important mm -hmm. definitely i i agree with that i actually recently had message uh ali on my grandmother having dementia and it was so hard because you know one day you're here one day you know who you're with and one day you're not so just that fact that that week it was really hard because you know um hard just leaving the home and us trying to like find her and things like that and i just love that the the freedom now that we have and we're that generation to teach others or be that voice that we didn't have when we were younger so um i'm really grateful for you know learning these things that we weren't taught but i also i'm also grateful for the things that they taught us of how to be those guerreras that i'm talking about and you know my grandmother is a perfect perfect example um to me in that sense she's 89 and it's the person who brought me here from venezuela so you know, I'll always be thankful for everything she teaches me still. So, yeah. It was like uh, they didn't know, but they knew enough that you needed something more. Yeah. They might have not known what it was, yeah. but they knew they needed they needed something better and, and hoping that you would figure it out. And you did. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go up next? I can go. I like this question. Okay. If you could have one last meal, what would it be? And who are three people okay. who would be at the dinner table? Ooh. I would love to answer this. Yes. Please. Please. Answer. <laughs> I'm all about the food. Yeah. <laughs> My last meal, honestly, I can't name one. I would have 
I'm gonna say who I'm gonna have at the dinner table first. So I will definitely have my mom. I'll definitely have my dear Ramon, and I'll have my sister. And the reason why I will have my mom and my uncle is because I'm gonna have them cook whatever they want for me. My uncle loves to cook, my mom loves to cook, and I know they're gonna make an event out of it. And it's gonna be memorable. And I don't even, I'm a vegan, but I don't care if it's gonna be meat or whatever. I just know, <laughs> like, it's gonna be just more than just the food. It's just really gonna be about the memory and the laughs and the jokes and the drinks and just the whole experience that I'm gonna enjoy from it. So, last meal and the three people. Okay, three people will be. For some reason, I want La India there. Oh. <laughs> that would be sick. Like, I want La India. I'm going to just say this. Yeah. Yeah. My mom and I would like my grandfather there. Mm. And last meal, last meal, Patelon. Yeah, I know. I mean, I have to go out. Oh, good. Like, if it's gonna be like my last one, you gotta go all the way. <laughs> all the way. Mm -hmm. no, it's good. I'll go. Uh, my mom ceviche, hands down, <laughs> hands down, no questions asked. Uh, and then the three people for me, I think, would be my niece and my nephew, because they're 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 who I would like want to impart the most wisdom on. You know, uh, they're they're my legacy. And uh, the other person I think would probably be a woman I admire so much, uh, Justice Sotomayor. You know, just someone that I feel like could impart the knowledge on me and wisdom on me and that like last bit of like, ooh, like enriching moment. Uh, so yeah, so kind of like both ways, right? Somebody that can like pour into me and then the two people that represent my legacy uh, on this earth, my, my nephew and my niece. Yeah. yeah. Who else wants to answer that one? I'm going to answer, and this is going to sound really weird, mm -hmm. but the last three people will be people that are not even alive, mm -hmm. but they were great inspiration for me. And that was Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. Mother Teresa, and the last one was Michael Jackson, because I admire him so much. Mm -hmm. And my last meal will be cachapas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! I love cachapas. Okay, I have to invite you over and make you some homemade Venezuelan cachapas. I, I love, I love, I definitely. There was a time that I became like super homesick from Venezuela, and I was like, okay, I need to figure out how to make this. And I mastered it, so now I can make cachapas. Cachapas are. So, are we gonna do it in your house? Next, your house, next week, my yeah. house. Whoever's out. I'm just inviting myself. I know. I'm just inviting myself. Oh, no. Anywhere, no matter where. Buenas noches de pijamas. Where are we at again? Where are we going? Okay. So for the people who don't know what cachapas are. Cachapa is, uh, it's like a pancake, but made of corn. It's arepa. Like pure corn. It's kind of like a, it's a, it's a sweet arepa. Yeah, it's like two different, well, in Colombia, it's arepa de choclo, which is no, no, it's that not one. But cachapa is two it looks like pancakes, but it, they're basically made in circle, and it's pure corn, and then they put like the most amazing cheese Everything. in it, like it's salty. Chicken, lettuce, broth. tomatoes. Yeah, you, you can. Ooh, and they, what is the white sauce they put? Yeah. The white sauce? Um, I just say la salsa, like whatever it is. Come la salsa, come la salsa. And it's just cheese, <laughs> but then like I've seen different people put like lettuce, tomato, yeah. oh, pollo, I like it with all pollo, of that. carne, but. Traditionally, in Venezuela, if you ask for a cachapa, it's just the two pancakes made of pure corn and white cheese. Yeah. Oh, I see. Just add some poquito, meat. Un poquito de mayo quechu. <laughs> Whenever you do. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, I was thinking like, oh my God, who would I... I mean, I have two versions of my two seating. One, I will, if it's like in the entertainment, I will have a seat with Halle Berry, Bad Bunny, and Selena. Mm. And my Selena. my meal, Selena. my last meal will be arepas. Oh, no. But in the, mo in the emotional side, it will be my grandfather who passed away when I was 15. I wasn't able to go back to Venezuela when he passed. Um, my grandmother, which I do miss her cooking a lot, the one that I thank God I still have alive. And my dad, and I will probably have Pabellón Criollo, which is my 
main plate and dish from Venezuela. What is that? It's, it's sort of like the Cuban dish that is ropa vieja. So my oh. version is white rice, black beans, minced meat, a little arepa, and maduro. Mm. And the black beans has a little bit of white cheese on top. What do you do to empower fellow Latinas? I'll go. Um, Cause it's super important to me, but sharing my knowledge and my story, I noticed in my industry specifically, people tend to gatekeep. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm so big on sharing my resources, my contacts. Um, when someone says, oh, I want to work with this, but I know that I know someone there sending you the email. Um, I like I, I love to be that person to connect to people or to put someone in another place to have the same opportunity as me. Um, especially if I work with women of color, I'm constantly like, you need to hire my graphic designer. You need to hire my photographer. I have a videographer for you. So for me, it's so important to empower other women by giving them information that I necessarily didn't have when I started in my industry. And I didn't like that feeling of feeling like I had no one to go to. I had no help. There was no blueprint manual for me and I don't want anyone else to feel the way that I felt. So that's how I like to empower my fellow Latinas. I mean, for me, it's this show, you know, it's sharing our stories. Um, I feel like sharing is caring. And the more that you share, the more that you're able to grow. And so that's why it's so important that I continue to share our stories. And, you know, you guys continue to share as well. For me, it's being available um, to women in my community for an ear positive reinforcement, um, to support wherever I can, and to share my experiences, definitely. I use my stories a lot, and uh, I use my life to kind of give people something to play on, because it's all it's the only thing I have is what I've known, you know? So that's I shared this on my episode as well, just having a voice of impact, you know, just your voice alone can help uh, another fellow Latina, you know, una hermana Latina. Um, sometimes blessings comes to us where we are the blessing. So I told this to Ali, I said, I'd rather walk into an event with 10 badass Latinas than me just walking in and showing up like, oh yeah, I'm the best. So I'd rather do that because that open door and opportunity could be the blessing. And I'm the, I could be the person who had to bring that person to their blessing. So even if we're in that event or connected to a brand, that opportunity might not have been for me, but it might've been for somebody that's in my circle. So that's why it's so important to have that openness of sharing those things. I mean, I know we do work hard for it and, you know, sometimes you also have to be very careful who you share your energy with. But mm -hmm. if you see other fellow Latina and boss babes doing their thing, kind of like how you have put all of us here to share our story. I mean, that is the blessing. You don't know from here who's going to connect with who and who has right. a resource that someone has been wanting an open door. So. That's a, a great way of always thinking, always knowing that those blessings that come for you might not come back the same way, but it's gonna come at another in another way. And you're gonna be like, why this came to me? And you're gonna be you're gonna remember that time that you opened that door, that seat for that person that needed that voice or that contact. I would also say just showing up as yourself. Mm. Um, I'm black and Puerto Rican, and I feel like a lot of people, especially in New York, could relate to that, the, you know, the Black Rican vegans, or not even vegan, just Black Rican, and seeing somebody who's their color and doing something that, you know, they would have never thought we would have been a Puerto Rican girl vegan. Like, nobody would have really ever thought that. <laughs> so it's like, you know, when you show up and you share your knowledge, you share your uh, creativity with the world, people really could feel that, and it inspires them to do the same. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think um, I can value to others, to other women, supporting them, whatever it is that they're doing, whatever field that is. To me, that's very important. That's why I'm so big on doing conferences about women, because I want, well, I feel honestly that if we come together more often than we do now, we can be big forces together because we are so creative. We are so powerful. But I feel that at times we don't really see it or or some people don't even know their worth really or their potential. And that's why they can really do more than what they should be doing. So yeah, adding value and supporting, it's 
one of the biggest things for me. Melly, you're up next. Do you want to ask your question? <laughs> what are some hurdles you have over have to overcome as a woman? I'll take that one. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest hurdles is um, being an entrepreneur and being a woman in business. Um, you tend to hit a, hit a lot of walls where you're under underestimated, mm -hmm. where you're not thought of as smart or as powerful. I'll give you an example. I went to look at a house the other day and I wanted to know how much it was. And the guy literally looked at me and he was like, oh, honey, you're so cute. And he ignored me. Mm -hmm. So then a week later, I pull up in my Benz and he's like, oh, here's the contact to the realtor. And I was like, look at you. Look at you. Yeah. So I feel like as a woman, it's almost like we have to show out 10 times more than a man does. We have to watch ourselves. If we're being assertive, you're considered a Right? I am that bitch. <laughs> you know? Like, but if I was a man, you would take it though. Mm -hmm. right. So I feel like that that's like one of the hardest things that I kind of have to like I stopped checking myself, I check people now. Like mm -hmm. it, it shouldn't matter. Like, yes, I'm assertive. Just because I'm a Hispanic woman doesn't mean I'm be like, I mean I'm more. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think I can relate to that. I mean, I think we all can relate. Um, the biggest hurdle has been, and I'll honestly, like, it doesn't make me less of a woman for thinking like this, but more so the situations I've been in, I've always, um, because of the industry in itself, I've always thought that I needed, like, a man next to me to walk in the room and represent me. And the reason being is because of that, you know? And it's hard. Um, it's hard in general, but I feel like the times that I have been like, you know what, forget that. I go against like, oh, okay, do it yourself, let's see, or, you know, and then you kind of like, when you're in front of the men and stuff like that, like they want to like, kind of like, I don't know the exact word, but like, like, how can I say it? Come on, like test, test you all. Like, yeah, they test you all the like time. they test you. And knowing that you're being tested is one of like the biggest, I guess, hurdles because it's like, you want to be like, yo, don't play with me, like, right. you know? But it's more so like you have to handle them the best way that you can. And that has been something that's like very big within my whole like process of career and stuff, but I've gotten, um, you know, even with lawyers, speaking with lawyers, like, you know, I there's times where I'd be like, like, you know, you feel like, damn, like, why do, why does it have to be like that? But I've just realized like the more, like you said, the more we come together, the more, um, even then like in music right now, a lot of women are, um, I think the women are the face right now. Like, we're kind of, like, just, like, coming in as just mad, you know, women, women, women. And I feel like the more they see that, you know, the more that they see, like, oh, you can't pin us against each other, the more that they see, like, oh, there's, like, a real sisterhood going on, they kind of, like, fall back more with that, you know, that manly kind of thing. So I feel like that's, you know, I agree with you, what you said, just coming, just having that visual representation of, like, not, nah, like, the girls, yeah, they all coming together, but, like, they really be together, you know what I'm saying? Like, they got yeah. each other's backs. Yeah. So that's, like, something that would even help that. Yeah, I can definitely agree also when I thought, I was like, Melly will agree with this in the music, especially I'm a stylist, so I've gone to certain bookings that let's say you go all the way to Las Vegas and then you get there and they book you for certain things you know you get there you have your hotel you have your flight but then let's say a client gives you a balance check why would you do that because I'm a girl so that's I've been in that position in the music industry so I definitely know and understand and that's why I'm like now I'm like so happy also that I have my representation but I have that person can, can just be like, no, she's not gonna step into the set until you pay her, or she's not doing this. So I'm like, why do you have to be like that? Like you can give the same word and effort of those seven days that I put in to pull clothes, to pack those clothes, to look for yourself, go all the way to an award show, an editorial, and still pay me and be, you know, polite and respective of all the work. But no, you make me go all the way 
three hour, six hour flight, and then I get a payment that's not even valid, and then I have to chase you for my money. That's not right. So I can definitely yeah, understand. Cool. And true, if you have more than another woman in Vegas, I'm like, hey, go with me, you know, sister, yeah. sister, let's do it. So I can definitely understand. It's not, it's not right. Yeah. So what's a Latina stereotype that bothers you? Oh, there's so many. Oh, my God. Okay, where do I start? The first <laughs> one, I think, is being over-sexualized. Ooh, I love that. That's a really good hate, one. Love that. hate the fact that you can walk into a room and because you're Latina, it's like, ooh, spicy. It's yeah. like, yeah. Uh -huh. like, what? Or exotic. You or ever exotic. get the exotic? Oh, you're so exotic. But And, and, and then people don't, really, like, would you say that, would you want somebody saying that to your sister or your wife or your mom right. and and it's so unfair it's so unfair and it's a big insecurity of mine because i'm like this is not all i have yeah. like i'm actually pretty smart if you want to talk to me and value what i have to say i think that's one of my biggest pet peeves i also feel like because latina women are also categorized as submissive mm. and it's looked at as a weakness as opposed to a strength mm -hmm. I, i've never looked at being a submissive wife or daughter or even sister respecting the men in my family I ever looked at that as a weakness i almost look at it as a strength mm -hmm. that i understand how to play the male ego mm -hmm. i almost felt like i was smarter mm -hmm. but society will have us feel like oh you're the poor little latina yeah. you know you're yeah. just big boobs and and a nice ass and and that's all you are and that's unfair because I think we all sitting at this table kind of prove that wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny you say that because I wear, this is fake, and I wear it. Really? Because I have people come to my pop-up or my DMs like, are you married? Are you single? And I'm like, I'm at work. <laughs> That's where right. I'm at. Like, right. and it's, yeah. it's, it, at first it was like, all right, I'll do like dismiss it, but they would, I would, because I'm always like working in my job, they would come to my pop-ups to try to flirt with me. And it was so uncomfortable. Mm. So, and they're, they're like, oh, but you're not married. You're like, I'm like, I'm just buy myself a ring. And I'm going to just show it to them so they can leave me alone. Like, that's how bad it started to get. And it's really unfortunate that I even have to do this. But that's just that's just the way it is right now, I guess. I'm, I'm laughing because I had to do something very similar. When I started in the industry about 80 years ago, I had to tell everyone that I was gay. Like, literally. I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like men. And then obviously they all find out later that I was. <laughs> but now I'm like, it don't matter, right? No, but it's, um, it's sad. I feel that also the industry that we all work in is dominated by men. I feel that, especially in the music industry, and I don't want to offend anyone because I work with a lot of men, and I said that in the last interview, I feel that a lot of this, we selling our dreams. Oh, especially to women yes. and I have a big problem with that and it's oh yeah you're great yeah let's work together and they bring you to the studio because I've seen it with yeah. my own artists oh yeah and it's all mm -hmm. like why are you doing this to get like like and it's so unfair it's so unfair and I see so many girls and even it's more they do it more obviously with girls. They can do yeah. it really with guys. Right. So many young, beautiful, talented girls that fall under that. And I'm just like, what do you get out of that? You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah. Some guy did that to me. He's like, oh, I got, he showed me the spot and everything. Maybe go to the spot. I have this section for you to do your business stuff. And I have, I'm going to, I have a, I own a TV thing and I'm going to have you do cooking recipes and stuff like that. And he stopped doing that when I was like, okay, well, um, the next meeting, my lawyer is going to be present. Oh, he well, never hit me up ooh, after that. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I <laughs> agree with like all of you guys, but what I do want to say that like obviously you guys haven't felt like we've all felt victim to something but we shouldn't look at it in such a negative way even though it is negative we shouldn't because 
Unfortunately, not saying that there won't be any change, but who you are, who you walk into the room is always gonna be that as long as you don't change that. You know, like, aquí llego el don, you know what I'm saying? And even with like the stylist stuff, like, I feel like, I don't know what everyone does in here ex exactly, but when you said stylist, you also have to keep in mind that it's like any job. People don't know what you're really doing to get there. And they just see it like, oh, yeah, the girl who's dressing you. There you go. Go over there. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you sometimes you have clients who respect you. Sometimes there's people who be like, that's just a stylist, you know? But that comes from upbringing. That comes from coming from a... a you know, parents will tell you like, oh yes, if you a cualquier lado, todo el mundo se trata igual. No importa quién llegó or nothing, everybody's the same. But I feel like, I feel like who said I think you said or you said I'm on the app. But <laughs> even with the, you know, like walk, oh, with the walking in and using girls and stuff like that, like I was signed to somebody who, like before I actually made it, made it like actually signed, like I was signed to a, a manager who I would like travel, um, like I would travel everywhere. I even went to Boston with him and everything. And the photographer ended up telling me that when he would go into label meetings that he wasn't bringing my name up. That the whole time he was bringing up another artist. And when I had finally like asked him, like, yo, but they like, hold on, what are you really doing? He's like, you know, I was just kind of building with you to like see if you wanted to get in a relationship. Oh, so God. the whole time I'm thinking like, this is my manager. Like, no, you trying to be my man, you know? So <laughs> it's like, in your bag. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's hard because we run into a situation where we don't necessarily know what the intentions are, but the more experience that I've had, I've had to realize that, yo, I'm gonna just walk in as myself and lay it on on the table. If I feel like you're about to push up on me, I'll be like, don't try me. Like, you know, like really just shut down, like right when it is like happening, because I feel like because um, most of the time, I don't know if this is your situation, but the reason why it goes a little deeper is because we'd be like kind of like shooken up or I've been shooken up in moments where I'd be like, damn, I don't want to mess up this opportunity or should I play the, you know, the woman role where I act oblivious to what's going on and I'll just take what I can. But sometimes it's like, yo, take what you can then because uh -huh, <laughs> if they want to play it, you play it too, you know? And it's like, everybody in here is a badass woman, you know? So it's like, at the end of the day, step in, get what you get and make it clear because regardless when you don't or if you do, they're going to want you anyways, you know? So... Oh, that's I'll definitely agree with that. That's kind of how I started carrying. I'm like, look, when you want to book an artist to sing at a play, so to walk into a studio, a producer, you pay them. So still, it's the same thing for your image to be in a magazine. You have to treat me the same. Si me quieres de verdad, me va a hacer el booking. Si no me quieres, that's fine. It's not. It wasn't for me, and I just move on, and I'm and I'm good with it. Like you said, it wasn't for me. Like learning when like not to open every door, you know? Cause there's, there's definitely people that's gonna be in your ear like, you crazy. Like, you know, there's, there's times where I, I was still like literally in the hood and I had opportunities, opportunities, but I'm like, si yo abro esta puerta, esto me va a cerrar 50 other doors because of this one, even though it's a big opportunity. So not every door you walking into, it's like, yeah, let me go, you know, so. I've loved the beauty of saying no. Like that's something that sometimes it's hard, but in this business, it's a beauty of when you just like, no, estoy bien, yeah. and, and move on. And you have that faith and patience that something bigger is coming for you. So just be at peace when you say no. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I agree. I say a lot, a lot of no. <laughs> a lot. I think for me, it's the stereotype of living in the Bronx, right? Like that's a huge stereotype. Uh, so everyone says like, uh, you live in the Bronx, you must be you live in the Bronx and you're Puerto Rican, oh, you're crazy. You know, oh, like, you like to fight, God. right? You like to fight. Um, and then it's also like, I feel like I do a lot, but they dumb me down. Like, they want to say, well, you live in the Bronx, so you haven't done X, Y, Z. Yes. And I'm like, but I am. And I always yeah. say, do not judge my decisions if you didn't know what my options were. Mm. You know, so I like that. Yeah. If you don't know the type of battle that I'm up against, 
Don't say anything at I'll all. I'll say it from the bones of my chest. That's I'm right. Like, yeah, me think too. I can fight with me. You scared of me, right? Think whatever you want to think, but I'm not going to say I'm from somewhere else. No, I'm from Highbridge. Yeah. That's right. I say it specifically. Where are you from? Highbridge. Yeah. It rings bells now. Mm-hmm. Hey, Boogie, Cardi B. Now, all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, 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 no. Yeah. You think I'm crazy? You think I'm whatever I am, but I'm proud to be where I'm from. Mm-hmm. All right. Who else hasn't asked a question? Because I don't want to cut Done. All right, I'm gonna ask the last question. Yeah. Hold on, let me see, let me see. Okay, finish this sentence. Growing up Latina is spectacular, fun, <laughs> energizing. Marta, growing up Latina is an honor. I wouldn't change being a Latina for nothing, and I will continue to be spicy con un sazón fabuloso. <laughs> Liana, growing up Latina is unique and powerful. Definitely. Amanda, growing up Latina is I would say imperfectly perfect. Mm. You know, finding like the beauty in the chaos. It's messy. It's a journey. It's a ride. But when you get to the end, you're proud. You're. It's an honor. <laughs> Melly, growing up Latina is? Um, I agree with all of the ladies. <laughs> but I say it's, it's a privilege. To me, it's a privilege. Like, it's, you know, you know more than one language. When you go back to your home, you know your hometown, the village, and you just see, you know, like Patio, all of that. Like, it's just, it just feels like, yo, like, I really be in the cold, but like, when I'm back home, like, I could just go eat some caña on a rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's such, like, it's, to me, it's privilege. Like, it's wonderful. Nikki, growing up Latina is, well, to sum up everything that we've all said here we are growing up Latina this is what it is this is what growing up Latina is this is what it means we come together we share stories experiences make relationships this is growing up I wanted to leave you guys with a little gift so under your table there is a bag full of goodies if you guys can open you have one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they had an extra. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Oh, oh, so again, shout out to Sigma Beauty, Lisa's <laughs> Curls. Oh. Um, for tomorrow, Bute Brand, Casita Michi, Esmeralda's Book oh, is yeah. in there. Oh, cool. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, so you guys all have goodies. Mind you, every single item in your bag is all Latina owned. Yeah. All Latina owned. I'm excited. I love Honestly, this. Honestly, about the resource because... <laughs> I love these girls. Love. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me and the CVS, <laughs> Baghdad. <laughs> Jeez. I want to thank you, ladies, for coming out. This means a lot to me. As you know, growing up Latina is a passion project for me. I don't want to get emotional again. But thank you guys for sharing your stories with me. And stay tuned for season two. Cheers. 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 Cheers to water. <laughs> Jack Daniels. Thank you to Jack Daniels. Yeah. <laughs>